Uh, Secretary, thank you for being here again and for spending so much of your life in, in working in this body to try and make it, make it uh, make policy that actually makes sense. That's why I, I, I still keep trying to figure out Pillar 1 and Pillar 2, uh, the possible loss for us of almost $200 billion. What's the offset for that? So how do we replace that lost revenue? How does that work into the whole idea of this? Well, that revenue estimate you're referring to JCT, I believe, and that is an extreme negative case. In uh, they, they indicated in their analysis that the outcome overall is uncertain, and in the most likely cases, um, the outcome in terms of uh, tax collections would be positive, not negative. Well, I, I know that's all debatable, and I, I, I keep wondering why in the world the United States is so hell-bent on giving up market to foreign countries and saying that this isn't the best interest globally of what we want to do. I'm more interested in, uh, in, the, in a very strong United States that uh, remains the strongest country on the face of the earth, that we don't have to depend on anybody else. Now, I understand that the U.S. is going to be presented an agreement on Pillar 1 to sign the next two months. So does Treasury commit to work with Congress before signing the OECD Pillar 1 agreement? Uh, we've been in touch with Congress uh, throughout this process. One of the things we heard from Congress on Pillar 1 is that um, there needed to be um, an opportunity for public comment. We heard that certainty around what's called amount B that uh, has to do with transfer pricing is very important to members of Congress, and it's something where we need to make sure we get firm commitments from other countries. We also heard from Congress that getting a very clear definition of uh, digital service tax taxes, what they are and what is ruled out, all this is very important, and we agree, and those are our red lines, and it's what we're negotiating for um, in the final um, months of negotiations on Pillar 1. And I agree with you on everything you've said. That it, it, On its best day, this can be, this whole scenario, what we're going, to, uh, going through can be considered unbelievably complicated and how, it, at the end of the day, it is in the best interest of the United States. Uh, I've, I've always thought that, you know, we seem to be getting into a push and pull and what constitutional authority lies with which body, uh, and uh, the idea that somehow, somehow Congress will be the afterthought in a process that absolutely it is supposed to control. So I, I'm really interested, as you go forward on this, the sharing of that, all that information, uh, I, I, just, I just don't understand the negotiations where, and, in the constitutional authority, and I know you can do certain things and there's other things that you have to run through the Congress. My concern is that the Congress seems to be an afterthought now and not the main consideration when we do these negotiations. And it's like, well, this is what you gave us some authority to do, so we're going to have to do it. I, I, uh, I just don't understand at all how we sell this to the people we represent that somehow this is in the best interest of the United States. I still want to dwell on the fact that we have been losing market share because of policies that we've initiated, not so much that we have strong foreign <clears throat> competition, it's that we have weak policy when it comes to maintaining our own market share. And for whatever reason, we seem to have become a global entity as opposed to the strongest country the world has ever known in a nation that is the first responder and everything that goes bad in the world, we're the first ones to be there. And we keep seeding off all of these different things that we have, all of these different uh, abilities that we have. And so, no, I think it's more important to act globally right now. I would just suggest that I'm looking at the globe right now, and the globe is looking at us to see, I wonder when the Yanks are going to show up. Uh, I just hate to see us keep giving up authority and mm -hmm. the negotiations taking place on the executive branch and then being run through the Congress at a later date. So all I'm, all I'm asking you to do is commit. Like, we need to know what's going on and what's taking place. I don't like giving anybody a pen 
uh, to go ahead and sign on to something in an international trade and a tax, a global tax initiative. It just doesn't make sense to me, and I think it's totally unconstitutional. And yes. I, in fact, it's not, it's just not the right way to do things. We have consulted with Congress throughout over the last three and a half years. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate what you're saying. would yeah. need to yeah. be It depends how, yeah, Ms. Young, excuse me, just to reclaim my, my time's up, but it depends on how you, how you identify we've consulted with Congress. I like to be consulted before something happens, not afterwards it happens. So you guys are willing to sign on. Well, listen, thank you for your service to the country. I think it's been incredible. And thank you for being with us today. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.